Hey everybody, Jordan Tremaine here back with another book review and I know lately I've been getting into a lot of classics. I don't even know if that C is the right way. Maybe it's like this, but um, hey, I've been having this thought that uh, maybe there's a reason they're classics. So I've been reading some more of those. I've also been reading some much longer textbook style books, so it's going to take a while to get through those. So I'm like, let me read some class book classics in the meantime. And today, we're going to take a look at something that I think everybody has heard of this story, but I almost have never met anybody who has read this story. And that story is The Adventures of Pinocchio by Carlo Collati. So, this book, The Adventures of Pinocchio, was written in the late 1800s, almost 1900s, like 1880-something by this guy named Carlo Collati, and it is quite a fantastic adventure when you look at it, because a lot of really crazy things happen in it. I mean, the whole book is based on this piece of wood that could talk, and then he gets turned into a marionette, and goes on all these adventures, and then becomes a real boy. Like, even, even just that is, I think, quite fantastic when you think about it. I think this story, everybody knows the concept so much, especially because Disney picked it up. Um, Everybody knows the concept so much that it doesn't seem really creative or crazy, but um, that, that I think is very creative and, and Carlo I think deserves a golf clap for how creative this book is because even just that little sliver that I, I described there is very creative and then all the other stuff that gets added on top. It's written in a way where it's just like, oh yeah, this, this is just what's happening. This is part of the story. And you get kind of sucked into the story and how really fantastic it is. But uh, it takes a lot of creativity to come up with something like that. So kudos to him. If you like these book reviews, please subscribe. Please write in comments and stuff. Please like it, share it with other people. Because I think the more books that people can read, reading books is so great. Even if you listen to it on audiobook, like with your headphones, because it's a time for you to like not be like, hey, let me let me say a bunch of stuff. Let me tell everybody what I think. It's a time for you to like shut your mouth and think and listen to what other people think. And sometimes when you have that mode of like, I can't yell at the author. I'm not talking to the author. I have to read or I have to listen. Then it helps you to slow your mind down, to have different thoughts and to accept different ideas. So I highly recommend, even if you don't read this book or any of the books on this channel, that you read something, you listen to something, especially something that challenges you, that's not part of the thing that you would every day read. Don't have to do it all the time, but read different things. But uh, yeah, so this book, um, it's about Pinocchio. This fictional not boy, because he's a marionette, and a marionette is a fancy word for like puppet that's made out of wood. Um, and what I thought was interesting, because this is the actual original book, which is a book book. It's not like some children's book that's 10 pages long and there's two words on each page and it's mostly pictures. This, the actual book is a book book that may have pictures throughout the book, but it, you have to turn pages. There's different chapters. The story develops, the characters develop. There's main characters, antagonists. There's the whole shebang a bang. So, um, don't think that this is like the kind of thing that you can get through in like three minutes. Um, even though I think there are these little short and sweet versions of Pinocchio. This is a whole book, which uh, I was a little surprised to figure out myself. But um, the thing I liked about this book is even though it was talking about Pinocchio on his quest to kind of grow up and mature and become a real boy, because basically the whole book uh, he's made out of wood, and he is, um, he's a marionette. It kind of makes really explicit, like, that there's things we can do that help us get better, that help us grow, that help us be m more able to contribute to the society, but we have to do them, and they may not be the funnest things, and if we ignore that, and we do what's fun, if we do what's, what we think is instantly gratifying at the time, uh, we might end up in the not best place. Um, and Pinocchio does this over and over and over and over. And he's kind of a slow learner in the context of the book about doing what you should do or being a good person, where in the beginning, he's kind of like totally immature. 
and then by bumbling and making mistakes and having to pay for his mistakes and then getting lectured and having to go to jail, all this stuff happens to him over and over and over because he continuously knows what he should do but chooses to do something else that he thinks is fun. By doing that over and over and, and facing the consequences, he slowly but surely becomes more and more mature until at the end he's kind of like given this reward of becoming a real person where I like that concept a lot because in here it's talking about like a, a wooden boy becoming a real boy but I think it's more for me like a metaphor or an allegory about growing up and becoming a real person, becoming an adult, becoming someone that's responsible and that has maturity and that's autonomous if you know what that means. It means like, it's like you can make decisions and suffer the consequences and you know what's going on, you have self-awareness and stuff like that. Well that doesn't happen overnight and it takes a lot of situations and mistakes and guides and mentors and resources to grow somebody into this point where they're a real adult and if they don't have those mentors and guides and resources, it can be very difficult and it can take a long time and they can stray into areas that are not so good. Because a lot of the people that Pinocchio deals with, like a lot of his friends that are boys, they don't end up becoming responsible, mature uh, adults or boys and stuff like that. They, they make their mistakes and they end up having to pay with them. One of them, it even shows like straight up, he finds out that his, his his homie boy um, from back in the day made some mistakes and he didn't learn from them or he wasn't able to escape his mistakes and he died. Um, and like Pinocchio was right there when he died and he was like, dang, I gotta stop making mistakes because I'm gonna die. Um, so I thought this book was really cool in that it gave this reality of like, you're not just born good and you just do everything good. You gotta learn, you gotta make your mistakes. And if you don't learn, through your mistakes, through your experiences, you're gonna continue to suffer. You may think that you're headed towards enjoyment because you're running towards the shiny thing or the thing that, that feels good right now, but are you setting yourself up to live sustainably, to, to have a good impact, to contribute to the community? And if you're not, like this may work out right now for a couple of minutes, maybe a couple of years, but is this a long-term plan? And is it something that's gonna hurt you in the end? Where I think a lot of people, they chase things that seem good now, kind of like heroin. Um, heroin, like when you're high, I bet it's like super good to be high on heroin. It feels really good and um, you can get addicted to it easily, but maybe that's not such a good long-term plan because you can't get high on heroin all the time for the rest of your life and just be high and it'd be great. Like there's gonna be diminishing returns and then there's gonna be a point where it gets bad. You can't just play all the time and not work. You can't just say, oh, I don't wanna read. I don't wanna do this or that thing because it's annoying or painful, it's not my favorite, and only do everything you want all the time. If you only ate candy all of the time, like, not only would you have health problems, but you'd get sick and your teeth would rot and all these things would happen even though candy is great. You can't do it all the time. Sometimes you have to do other stuff that may be more responsible or whatever. But um, I think this book does a good, good job of showing the progression of somebody getting more mature to the point where they can have responsibility for themselves. And what I really liked about this book is that it was for children. It's a children's book and children can understand the concepts in this book. It's so great. Like if you read this story to children and you talk to them about it and you like, hey, well, what did, what did this mean? Why were they going this? Why did Pinocchio do that? Um, do you think that if you did something similar, this would happen and like ask questions of conversation with kids? Like it could really help them to mature and get better and give them a resource to help kind of do what Pinocchio did and become a real boy or become an adult or become more mature or whatever without having to make all the mistakes because it's like laid out there, right there for them. Um, but it also works for adults because I was reading it and as I was like, or I was listening to it on audiobook, but as I was listening to it, I was like, some of my friends are like this. Some of the people I know in my life are like that. Oh, I can, I can see how making that mistake could lead you down here. 
and it was a lot of child stuff like um, eating candy and skipping school and not reading and stuff like that but you could you could translate that into adult stuff like drinking excessively not educating yourself which is not reading or going to school and like those things have like the same detriments it's just on a different level for different types of people so I really appreciate this book and I'm kind of excited because I was like scrolling through Amazon Prime video for no reason last night because I was bored and it looked like there was a really good uh, recent Pinocchio movie on there so I'm gonna go check that out and see how it is but I was like watching the trailer for it and it looked like it kind of like because I just finished the book it looked like the trailer was like actually going along the, the things that really happened in the book because sometimes you read a book and then you're like, oh, there's a movie. And then you watch the movie and the movie has nothing to do with what happened in the book. And you're like, what the heck? But this one looks like it's going to stack up. So I'm kind of excited to go watch it. And it's like good CGI and all that kind of stuff. So the book that we're talking about today is The Adventures of Pinocchio by Carla Collati. And um, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the fantastic elements where um, there was a lot of personification or animation of animals that um, they were able to talk and like um, certain animals like foxes are made to seem sly, snails are slow and stuff like that. Like the fact that they were a snail or a fox or a cat or whatever, it was part of their personality and it was showing like there's different types of people and using animals for that. Um, I thought that was cool. Um, but I recommend this book. It's easy to read. It's very fantastic in that there's a lot of creative elements in it. It's not stuff that happens every day, but it is made in a way where it's kind of a metaphor for stuff that does happen every day, just said in a really fantastic way. So I think it's interesting. It's uh, something that, that you want to read or you want to keep reading. It's not very boring and uh, it's good for all ages. I would highly recommend like reading this to your kids or um, talking to them about it, not just, hey, let's watch this movie, and then, oh, we watched a cartoon, let's never talk about it again. Like, read with your kids, or have conversations with your kids about the different stuff that happens in the movie. What did they like? What did they not like? Did, was it realistic at all? Did they see any of their friends or themselves in any of the characters and stuff like that? And kind of like have starting this thought process where the kids can uh, kind of grow from the experience of the book or the movie or the audio book or whatever. So, I like this book. I think it's good for everybody. It's a classic for a reason, even though some of the stuff is like super duper fantastic. But um, yeah, this has been another book review by Jordan Tremaine. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.